This question isn't as bad as it looks, but I know that some people who struggle with algebra, they're not going to really know what to make of this. So this might be a skip for you if you really struggle with algebra. There are other algebra questions you'll be able to do very easily using the calculator, but because there's so many unknowns here, an X, a Y, and a B, it's going to be very hard for us to use the calculator. So let me show you the way that the test kind of wants you to do it. It's really just about manipulating this equation to get what we want. So if I rewrite it, 1 over 7B is equal to 11X over Y. And they want us to express x in terms of b and y. That just means we got to rearrange. So we want to get x alone. So the first thing that I see is I don't like the fraction with the x. And I know that fractions are basically division. So the best way to get rid of division is through multiplication. So uh, you can do this in one step. I'm going to do it in two. But basically, if we multiply both sides by y, the right side's y is going to cancel out. And that will just leave us with an 11x on this side. And then on the left side, it's just multiplying fractions. So this isn't so bad. The y just multiplies by the 1. If we wanted to put it over 1 for kind of like the symmetry of fraction multiplication, we can. But that leaves us then with y over 7b. And here's where, again, because it's fractions, a lot of you might get a little confused, but it's not so bad. Um, we can divide by 11 to cross this out and get x by itself. Now, if I tried to do that here, this looks kind of crazy. So I prefer not to have to think about like, okay, how do you divide a fraction by something? Like that's a little messy. So instead, I'm gonna go the route of pretending that division and multiplication are kind of equivalent. Well, they are equivalents, this isn't so bad. So dividing by 11 is the same as multiplying by one over 11, right? And I can even show you that on the right side too, right? So if I had done that from the start, and multiplied by 1 over 11, think about what I have now. I have an 11 on the top and 11 on the bottom. They're going to cancel out. It's the same thing that happened with the y. And if we wanted to, from the start, we could have multiplied by y over 11 and done all of this in one step. But just to show you, it doesn't really matter. As long as we're comfortable with how fractions work, we have the ability to kind of do a bunch of different things to move any multiplication or division over to the other side of an equation. So now, I have some, again, basic fraction multiplication. Y times 1 is Y. 11 times 7B is going to be 77B. And that is just equal to X by itself. And that is what choice C says. So that is what the answer is. So I get why that's a little confusing. Most, probably if you don't like algebra, it's because you don't really understand fractions, which come up in algebra quite often. So there's, there's a little bit of you know, this problem going on. Um, one other path we have, though, is we could always arithmetize. Um, they never make us solve for any of these variables, right? X is not a number, Y is not a number, B is not a number. So we can make them numbers and kind of just see what happens. And maybe this makes it easier to do all these moves because we aren't as intimidated by all the other variables. In this case, since X is kind of where I finally want to end up, I'm going to make up values for the other variables, for B and for Y. And just to keep things simple, I'm going to make both of them 1. Can't make them zero because you can't divide by zero, right? So when we have fractions, we sometimes have limitations about what we can pick as our numbers. But if I make b equal to one and y equal to one, then my equation becomes this. One over seven times one is equal to 11x over one. And kind of cleaning that up a bit, we would get one seventh is equal to 11x. And we do have a calculator, so this isn't so bad, right? We can divide both sides by 11. So now that we have numbers, we can divide. I'm going to do, I wouldn't do it this way, but I'm going to. 1 7th uh, divided by 11 is going to be a very messy number, but it gets me that x is equal to 0 0.01299. Let's leave it there. I'm running out of space. Now, what good does that do? Well, if I put 1 for b and y into all these answer choices, I should get x also equal to 0. Uh, 01299 because that's how this should work. The same numbers should work in the original expression and the uh, final expressions because they're supposed to be the same expression. They're just rearranged. So let's try uh, choice um, A. Uh, uh, I think this might be a problem. Let's see. 7 times 1 times 1 is 7 over 11. 7 times 11 or 7 divided by 11. Nope. Is 0 0.636 dot dot dot. So no. This would be 1 minus 77, that's negative 76, so nope, that's not right. This would be 1 over 77, 1 divided by 77 is, uh, unsurprisingly, 0 0.01299, so that looks good. 
and then this would be 77 times 1 times 1, which is 77, so that doesn't work. So maybe this is a little bit more confusing for some of us, but if you really hate algebra, the benefit of arithmetize is it lets us turn that algebra into arithmetic, and maybe some of the moves that we need to make are actually much easier because we don't have to carry around both numbers and letters. We're only moving numbers, and the calculator might be able to help us with some of those moves. Uh, so it is a valid way to get this. It's a little bit more time consuming, but this is a question that mm, you really want to be able to get. It's still middle difficulty. It's not really something we'd want to be skipping with. So try to practice, arithmetize on these questions where they ask you to do something in terms of something else. It usually means we can substitute and uh, see how this thing works with numbers instead of letters.